Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N scale. Pardon my train as it runs by the screen because why, yes, we are getting some things up and wired this week. And yes, it's freaking fantastic. So last weekend I worked primarily on getting the Y configured for the staging yard uh, just outside of Allegheny and had to remind myself exactly how the AR1 gets wired and I'm going to be 100% honest with you it is one of the easiest components to wire except when you're not paying attention to what you're doing and that was the case this past weekend and I had a feeder going to some tracks that did not run through the AR and as a result, it didn't work. And I kept tripping out. And it was 100% a user error, and it was stupid. And when I realized what my mistake was after having tried multiple things and not coming up to any great success, uh, boy, was that, was that embarrassing. So uh, it is very important to remember that when you have a reversing section, whether it's a Y or whatever, reversing loop, turntable, it's very important to remember that you do have to have all of the power sources to the track in the reversing section linked to the AR. Otherwise, it is not going to work. It is not going to switch. And yeah, so anywho, uh, obviously we do have that up and running now. So this is one of... Well, three reversing sections on on this lower level. So I've got the Y. Uh, I've got a two reverse loops in the um, uh, four reverse loops, I guess, actually on the lower level. Uh, and then I've got the turntable as well. So lots of wiring to do. I'm going to take you under the layout here for just a second and show you the mess that is under here. And I know this is look at this look at this disaster that is going on right here. So there's the AR just sort of dangling out there in, in no man's land. And yeah, this all needs cleaned up. But this was more of a uh, test to make sure that I knew what I was doing and to get everything uh, hooked back in. And so uh, um, now that the, uh, the AR is functioning, I can go ahead, I can put electrical tape around all the joints that need electrical tape, and then I can sort of clean this up because we've got way more wire under here than we actually need. This can all get shortened up, and what can't get cut can just simply be uh, coiled neatly and stored under the layout. So if your layout looks like this and looks like this mess, that that's embarrassing. Don't leave it like that. This is a work in progress. This was easy to track, but, but please do not leave your layout looking like this. Okay, folks, so I want you to see this diagram. This is taken right from the Digitrax website where they are explaining how to use the AR1. And I want you to note where the two solid black lines are cutting through both rails. Those are your insulated rail joiners. So that is where you're going to isolate a Y to wire this thing up. Now, you're gonna follow the instructions on the AR and it's going to show you that one side is going to basically be your track power and that is the leg of the track where you do not have an isolation okay so if there's no isolation joint that's your main track that's your default track that's your booster track power okay it's right to the right from the booster to the rails where you have the isolation so where you've created a section that's isolated that's your reversing section so in this image it would be off to the left Further down the track off to the left, you would need to have another set of isolated rail joiners in both rails. In DCC, you always isolate both rails. You can't do one or the other. There's no common rail like there is with a DC setup. And so when you get further down the line, you're going to have another set of rail joiners, and this detail doesn't show it. So that kind of makes things a little bit confusing. And that's where I had my issue is I forgot I had a feeder further down the line that was going right from the bus power and wasn't running through the AR so my quote unquote reverse section wasn't actually reversing it was shorting out because it couldn't switch polarities because it was also getting power from the bus line so you go further down every connection between those two isolation joints 
and the ones way far, farther down are going to be controlled only by the AR. And you can have multiple sets of feeders, but they all need to go through the AR section. So out for this, where the AR directions say out to the reversing loop, that's where the, that connections would go to. And so my recommendation is you gather as many connections as you need, you tie them all together, make a nice joint, and then run one wire for each rail into the uh, AR. Do not try to make your connection all, with all those feeders at the AR. It's just not big enough. It'll get bulky. You, you'll end up shorting out uh, because things will touch that you don't intend to. Always remember whether you're dealing with a Y or whether you're dealing with a reverse loop, you need to have the reversing section as long as the longest train that'll be using it. So if you're running distributed power or you're running really long trains that may have helpers at the end, you need to have your reversing section be that long Otherwise, you will short out. Okay, so the last thing that I want to go over this week is the turntable. Now, this is the Cato turntable, and I know there are a lot of other versions out there. You can get, I think Walters makes one, and Atlas made one. There might be, in other scales, there might be other options. Uh, I think some of the European manufacturers make one. But the Cato unit is probably one of the better ones for end scale and the reason i'm saying that is because you don't have to do any complicated programming it's already done for you you don't have to worry about indexing the track is already indexed and what i mean by index is is when you turn the switch and you rotate your turntable it already knows where to stop now one of the cool things about it is not only does it know where to stop but it automatically powers the adjacent track now when I say it powers the adjacent track, the table itself is powered from the adjacent track. So each of your little spokes there on the turntable is going to need its own power source. And once you do that, you the bridge has little fingers and it will reach out and it will get its power from, from the track. And you technically don't need to power both sides of the, you know, if you've got it opposite facing tracks, but I recommend it so in places where I have tracks on both sides of the table where the train can either back off or go forward, I do have feeders on both sides. Just like everything else, you need to make sure that you've got it all wired correctly, otherwise you'll short out. Now, here is where it gets interesting and where another AR is going to come into play. So let me show you. Uh, I'm going to take you right back here. Okay, so this little line that is feeding the engine house comes back out onto the main line, out onto main one here, and it is in the middle of a reverse loop. So, this track could be oriented in any way, depending on how the last train entered this reverse loop. And so I've isolated my turntable section right here, and I have connected my AR1 supply to this track right here. So that no matter what this track is, the AR1 is always comparing the main line to what the turntable track is. And so by doing that, I am never going to short out my turntable track because it's always gonna be able to match what's out here on the main line. So all the track, that is going into here, all of this track is always going to be the same as it is out here on the main. Now, if while I'm in here shuffling locomotives around and getting ready to build a train, uh, a train would come out on the main and it would flip the polarity of the main, num the number one main, that's okay because as soon as my locomotive comes out of the engine facility, it will simply correct itself through the AR1, okay? It is really that simple, folks. And because you're using um, the way the Cato uh, turntable is, is wired and you can spin this thing all the way around and it doesn't matter because technically right here, this bridge is unpowered. That is a little bit annoying for sound locomotives. Uh, it's just a thing you gotta deal with but the turntable does not care which way you orient the locomotive. So if you spin it all the way around, that's totally fine. 
it will just be ready to rock and roll. Like I said, you will lose power when it goes to unpowered sections of the turntable. So if you don't have power all the way around your table, sound's going to cut out. To avoid that, you can just kill the sound when you get onto the turntable, turn it around, shut the sound off, or you've got to power all of your track. But it's that simple. Okay, so that is going to wrap us up for this week's update. The uh, next week's update, I expect to have a lot more for you because there's going to be a couple of days off. We have Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Those are holidays for me, so I will be off work. And I will be spending some time down here in the train room, getting as much train room stuff done as I can. And so next week, we'll see you right here. There will be more stuff up and running. I got some things that are in the mail. And if they come in in time, which they should, I will have another electronics update for y'all. Okay, since I won't talk to you between now and Thanksgiving, I hope everybody here in the U.S. has a wonderful Thanksgiving, safe Thanksgiving. If you're deep frying a turkey, please read the safety instructions because you know what happens when you put too much oil in and everything catches fire and just do not be that person that makes the news. And we will see you here next Saturday.